I grabbed the snack, so. I can't summon one right here. I didn't think it would let me. I'd have to have it actually survive the whole way through. Okay, yeah, so I do have to go back. we go. That's what I wanted to try. This is a highly defensible location. monitor staring at it. That's adorable. See, even my cat likes to watch me play. Oh, that's something you should have got a picture of, Mux? And then we could have posted it and just been like, 
Dude, I'm so awesome. Even cats like to watch me play. <laughs> this whole area so we don't have to worry about it now. bunch of bolts. Anything else we can buy, uh, buy that we're not full on already? I don't think so. Wait, where? What are you waiting for? Pick up the needle. Which needle? Where is it? Here, take this. Oh, right here. Okay. Stick it in the bad man. Fontaine waits above. There will be no going back from here. Make sure you are ready to face him before moving on. Here we go, guys! Make sure we do a save. Oh. <laughs> 
Nuns are really going to be helpful. They offered you this city.
And you refused it. And what did you do instead? What I've come to expect of you. You saved them. You gave them the one thing that was stolen from them. Aww. A chance. A chance to learn. To find love. To live. Oh, so we actually took them all back up with us! And in the end, what was your reward? Aww. You never said. But I think I know. A family. So that's like a um, I don't know if you wanna know what the evil ending was, because that was so sweet. I read testers as toasters. I was like, why are there toasters in the credit? <laughs> Is there anything in the credits? Other than like credits? Well, and also with this being the remaster. waiting just in case you weren't considering the fact that it's your master. Well, that's not that worth about waiting. I was gonna do Far Cry Primal after this and check that out. Been wanting to check that out for a while. And also I was lazy and didn't install Bioshock 2 yet. So I'll do that today. So. No, I... But it's been a while since there's been a game like that. And it's it's all hard to say because I've liked and really enjoyed all the other games that we've played recently. But I think the last game that I got those kind of like aw awestruck moments, I guess, was probably Horizon. There's Horizon, Demon's Soul, and Guardians of the Galaxy for sure, but I did those before Horizon. And so I can't even quite just pin what it is. It's just. I mean, okay, one, fire and bees. Plus a flamethrower and a crossbow. Like, that to me is already a recipe for awesomeness. Because uh, <laughs> y'all know that those are like. I mean, granted, the crossbow isn't a bow, but it's close enough. It's just the way the combat worked, it was high action, decent story, just the right amount of humor, maybe slightly buggy, maybe that's what it is, maybe we haven't played a game that's been slightly buggy in a while, in like a funny way, not in a frustrating crashing every time something important happens way. I'm trying to like pin what it is, and I can't quite do it. It's just, just you know, sometimes you get those games that just give you those like 
feelings where you just start giggling. You can't help it. That was this game for me. I think a part of it too was that feeling of like being overpowered at times. It's like you don't want that too much in the game because it does become It does become, like, almost tedious in, like, the opposite kind of way, but it's still... It's nice when it happens occasionally, you know? And then they find other ways to keep providing a challenge. was part of it as well because i kind of really like those moments where you're like one or two shotting things or like one comboing things kind of like you were where we would throw bees then fire and then shoot them in the face with the crossbow also why I liked a lot of the earlier Assassin's Creed games, too. Nope, nothing else. There's a museum. I'm gonna check the museum. Museum of Orphan Concepts. A guided tour of ideas that irrational... Games discarded or reworked heavily during the making of the original Bioshock. Huh. Flow Profum? Uh. Prototype Big Daddy variant who mold players with an enormous hook and fired iron bearings from a barrel. Stood for a slow projectile fucked up melee. <laughs> he served long enough, he survived long enough to become a fully functional AI, but the team eventually cut him to focus on polishing uh, other big daddy types. This model later appeared in Bioshock 2 as the Rumbler, throwing miniature turrets instead of cannonballs. I like how its name was literally Slow Projectile Fucked Up Melee. The original model, model for the bouncer type featured a flat-headed drill at the end of each arm. The Big Daddies were envisioned as the builders of Rapture with weapons modified from tools they would have used in its constructions. Okay. When the gatherers were reimagined as little sisters, one of the bouncer drills was changed to a gloved hand so the two characters could interact with each other. Oh, okay. Uh, try to envisage how an underwater city would actually function in this early concept work of Rapture. One idea, imagine a thick forest for the purpose of oxygen exchange, seen here with an observation catwalk running around the edge. The concept of using trees for oxygen exchange made it into the final game. It may be hard to imagine that this creature, whose job it was to reclaim Adam from corpses around Rapture, was the earliest iteration of the idea behind the Little Sister. Since the Gatherer generated absolutely no sympathy from the players, the team experimented with concepts for featuring a number of animals, including the infamous dog in a wheelchair. I've never seen that. Uh, and later, a grotesque miniature humanoid. Finally, a concept sketch of a deformed child inspired the Eureka moment. Responsible for the little sisters. Yeah, I think that if 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 this had been it, I would have been like, kill it! Kill it! So I think they went with the right decision.
first splicer that they created for Bioshock, Stitchy, was used in many early concept demos and was fully functional in-game with kinematics, hit reactions, and voiceover. It took us a long time to realize he wasn't a good model. This is probably the worst abortion that Irrational has ever made. Oh, I think that looks kind of cool. Some of the first concept sketches to show Bioshock's enemy is moving in a more human-like direction. Uh, coupled with the approach that, uh, with the idea that Adam deformed the body in a way that related to its intended function. Okay, so these are all of the same. Before solidifying the fiction around Adam, Irrational experimented with the idea of it being an external injected substance. Here you can see us playing around with Adam being mechanically injected. So the splicer's got vials of it on his belt. The, this model was created but never made it into the game in any form. Huh. Uh, moving from grotesque to human was a slow process, while early concepts saw the melee enemies through monstrous arms. The team had trouble conveying how someone who had spliced to become a marksman would appear. Uh, these are early concepts of for the rosy type of Big Daddy, who, like the bouncer, was envisioned as a construction worker who had been repurposed as a protector for the gatherers. Yeah, they never really go into why they're called rosies. So I don't know if that comes up later in another one of the other games. Kind of cool looking. Well, look at this dude. I don't know if this part was in the, um... Like, I don't know, is this part in the... The classic? This gray elephantine splicer was an early grenadier from the same period of development as Stitchy and Hooker. He was a guy who spliced to carry... Uh... Around giant grenades and throw them at you. The model was built in texture, but never animated. You don't remember, but you probably just miss it. I could see this being... This would be something you would either be really into, or just be like, eh, I'm done the game. I could see. <clears throat> the location depicted here was built for the Vision demo. A small level demonstrating several of the key elements of the game, such as the Big Daddies and the Gatherers. You like it, but with me, you finishing it was probably enough at the time. Whoa, what's with the bodies floating outside? This area appears in the Neptune's bounty level of Bioshock, but the bodies floating in the ocean were cut late in development when their cast shadows proved too distracting from the action in the room. Huh! Interesting. There's butt sticking out. Girl? Girl. Early spider type? You like the idea of the corpses being all over outside? Hooker. Wonder why they changed that name. <laughs> Created around the same time as Stitchy and the Grenadier, the Splicer was dubbed the Hooker because of her weapon of choice. The concept evolved into the Spider Splicer when it was decided that the Splicer models could fill any behavior role, and the Hooker model later became the Baby Jane Splicer.
Not as much as a cut concept as an Easter egg for observant museum visitors. You see creatures can be seen swimming past the player's view during the bathosphere ride down to Rapture in Bioshock's opening sequence. I don't remember seeing the goblin shark, which is what this guy here is with the, the nose. Those are called goblin shark. I don't know how accurate that is. One, two, three, four. Because I think they would probably have six skills anyways, because they're one of, like, the older ones. I'm curious now. You think it's missing his inner jaw? Yeah, they're supposed to be, like... Some of the pictures, though, they don't always stick their, like, their upper jaw out. Like, because if you look, here's one right here. I think it's mainly the volume. Yeah. So, that's what I'm saying. Could be. I just want to see... Let me see this picture here. Two, three, four, five. I need a bigger I need a bigger picture of a goblin shark because i know that a lot of the older sharks actually had six skills not five like that I'm trying to find no maybe this one only had five okay bonus points for um correctness yeah okay you get bonus points. Yeah, I'm going to do all three, but I'm probably going to do Far Cry Primal this afternoon. You don't remember seeing the anglerfish. I don't remember seeing it swimming around, but there was either a skeleton or a um, another one. I know that we saw the whales. I know that we saw the squid, at least, in the thing. This whale bone was in um, the one area where it falls down. Some of the water sequences were slightly changed in the remaster. That could be. I could see that. Well, and that's the thing, is the sharks that were swimming around, I don't recall them looking at... Yeah, because that's not quite a goblin shark either. That's almost like a goblin shark mixed with, like, a whale shark. But see, there's no teeth. And it's got, like, a whale shark mouth. So I take away our bonus points, but I will not deduct any marks. How's that? <laughs> Because these are probably just directly the models that they used in-game, too. So why would they model all the little teeth? But. I just want to go through this. Because I find, like, artwork and stuff for games really interesting. This early concept for Sander Cohen's fleet hall was crafted after level building had begun. When the designers found they were having difficulty conceptualizing the theater space, it was one of the earliest spaces built for Bioshock. And many of the assets used in this museum come from that area. Huh. Ionic Rapture Concepts. This was the first image that really captured all the visual elements that made Bioshock Bioshock. A large view of the ocean, the aquatic lighting scene, and the elegant art deco uh, design elements. Without this image, Bioshock would have been a radically different beast. After all the things you've seen about weapons in video games, you have no doubt it was likely just modeled after an image they found and wasn't worried about accuracy. Except the accuracy of the image. Yeah. Actually, um, I know I know which YouTube videos you're talking about. It would actually be kind of cool to do something like that with, uh, with video games, but with biology. I know I kind of already do it in my streams.
but I, maybe that's something I have to think about. Because if it's not done already, that could be something to make me stand out. Because we already kind of nerd out about biology and stuff a lot here. So. This is an early concept depicting a Big Daddy bursting through a wall, which inspired the audio log in the Big Daddy training grounds area about a rogue Big Daddy. The player then encountered him at the end of the level. This is a concept sketch depicting what would later become Submarine Bay, an area which housed an important scene for Atlas. Oh yeah, where the the, the sh thing blew up. Kind of wanted that to be a giant lobster claw. I'm not gonna lie, but it's not. It's kind of like. I I don't even know. It's like. A lobster claw and a squid had a baby. Yeah. This character, uh, derisively called Yam Hand, <laughs> around irrational games, was the poster child of a conceptual phase that preceded the decision to go with human enemies. I'd point out the drawings behind the model, says lead artist Sean Robertson. You can see the top one got built, but the other two informed the design as well. Uh, as we trended more towards humanoids, the Scooby monsters got goofier and less scary. Okay, some of these look cool, though. Like, this one here actually looks cool. This would be horrifying if you could ran into that. These were some of the earliest pieces done for Bioshock from back when Irrational was still working on SWAT 4. The only concrete ideas at the, that point were an undersea city and biological experimentation. So early concepts focused on those themes. That one looks kind of goofy. This one actually looks like it would be terrifying. This was the fourth protector concept originally created with an organic slug attached to it. A model was started but never completed as the team narrowed their focus to three and finally just two big daddy types. I still like this as a protector, said artist Rob Waters. We started modeling and I really pushed to get it in, even as just a static model on the floor, but it never made it. Aww. Dude, you should finish your model. I think you should. I think it looks cool. I think this guy's heart came out. This character is essentially the missing link between the grotesque early designs and the human splicers that appeared in Bioshock. This is the last bad model we did before moving on to what actually went into the shipping ga game. Uh, after playing with him for a while, we just said, why don't we use humans instead? I always thought of these as Scooby-Doo monsters because they were too inhuman to invoke empathy. If only irrational games were still a thing. Sounds like this was originally supposed to be like Underwater Doom, except we're what made it hell. I can see that. Oh, I didn't see the top one. This is one of several paintings that tried to portray the most important elements of Rapture at once. These images would help to find the ruined underwater art deco aesthetic that the team was attempting to capture. It's so cool. A lot of this would have potential ties to uh, the surgeon. Between splicing and the surgeon, altering appearances, who knows what would have appeared. Yeah! Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. I think he'd uh, have to be a later boss if that was the case. Yeah, because he was like one of the first guys that we actually came up across. That was like a specific person. 
That's pretty cool. I hate to Yeah, we finished. We got the good ending, which makes me very happy. Did I ever look at these ones? Those are improvised weapons that look like they had been found on the seafloor. Melee range and slow projectiles. Cool. Okay, I think that's everything. It's hard to do the bad ending. Mox is just gonna show me a video later. No, I thought this thing was pretty cool. Except for the inaccuracies on this um, goblin shark here. Give them some credit on the the angler fish, though. I think I can switch and try some um, Far Cry Primal um, just because I haven't installed 2 yet, Bioshock 2 yet. Plus, I'm kind of liking the idea of changing it up every so often. Um, that said, we will be back to Bioshock 2 tomorrow morning. You have to take the atom from all the kiddos. I figured. I figured. I was just gonna be nice, so. I'm gonna have to look into the whole thing whether there's any, um, any channels that actually go into biology and video games, though. Biology and ecology and video games. Because I'm trying to look at this. The skeleton is missing the hind legs on the whale, though. They actually do have hind legs, usually. It's usually just a few, like, loose bones, though. Which is probably why they wouldn't be there. They'd have to be, like, attached with wire. This is roughly how the heads look, though. Like, whale skulls are actually very, like, empty. I'm not saying they're all like that, but... That is... Kind of how some of them are. Anyways. Okay. I will be back in a minute. And we will start up some Fire Cry Primal. Hold tight, everybody. Uh, for those who missed it, I actually really love this game. Um, it's one of the first in a while that gave me those giggly oh shit moments. So, I'm really, really looking forward to doing the other two. But for now, hold tight. I'm going to be switching over to some Far Cry Primal.